All right, Dan. All right. Well, the um, you know, an interesting topic it has to do with how when Christ came, you know, into the world, uh, it, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever exercises faith will not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, a situation of two sides going on, either everlasting eternal death or uh, everlasting life through salvation, uh, because Christ was the last Adam. Uh, he passed the test that uh, Adam failed. Uh, Adam was being tested, uh, you know, through evil, through Satan. And uh, he knew the command of God. It was it was not a matter of whether uh, he was going to, uh, you know, feel it was right or wrong, God's uh, decision to not let them eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, there was nothing being deprived of them. They had all the trees in the garden uh, to eat from there was only one being reserved not for their use and he basically uh entered into sin deliberately willfully because he knew full well because he was given the command whereas eve uh was not there when the command was given she was literally only on whatever hearsay it would have been from adam uh, but um the focus of this uh you know has a lot to do with uh, the book of uh, Luke, very interesting. Luke was a physician of all the apostles. He was someone in that realm. And when you look at chapter two of uh, uh, basically Luke, it says, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree uh, from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Very interesting. So uh, they were uh, to basically come in. I have a little bit of footnotes um, from the Geneva Bible on this. I kind of took a little bit of reference here. And we can look at uh, its rendering. And it says in the Geneva, the 1599, uh, it says, And it came to pass in those days that there came a decree from Augustus Caesar that all the world should be taxed very similar to the um to the king james bible this first taxing was made uh you know basically um you know to come about to for a purpose uh and it's actually explained in the footnotes of the geneva bible so i'm just going to read you its footnotes on uh luke chapter 2 verse 1 and it says christ the son of god taking upon him the form of a servant and making himself of no reputation is poorly born in a stable and by means of Augustus, the mightiest prince in the world, thinking nothing less, hath his cradle prepared in Bethlehem as the prophets forewarned. Okay, so it's very, very interesting how it mentioned there that Christ, the Son of God, taking upon him the form of a servant and making himself of no reputation is poorly born in a stable. Well, <laughs> interesting. When you look at the laws of England on this, you know, focus birth event that unfortunately is placed on December 25th, other than on the proper date that would be a few months earlier, according to the proper calendar following the Bible. Um, when you look at uh, the word, uh, you know, bastard because interestingly someone who is born without a surname is called a bastard in the laws of england in their breakdown of such a word so i'm just going to bring you to the word bastard uh showing up in the college webster's edition so let's bring you over to there for a moment Why it's so important literacy for us to have the understanding of words. And so you go into this College Webster's. Uh, you won't find this in the 1828, uh, but uh, it is in the College Webster's because it uh, it goes into the etymology. Sometimes the no Webster's really doesn't go into it uh, very clearly. And I, I think that this may have been one he left out deliberately. 
um, because certainly uh, at the time that Noah Webster was putting out the uh, the English dictionary, he would have been uh, most likely in promotion of this holiday as the bastard that he was, um, because he was using a legal surname um, as his way to publish his legal gain and uh, having such an impact on the language. Um, certainly it was literally he was involved in a teeter-totter of Webb and Stir um, in his name itself, the surname that he bared. But anyways, we go to uh, Bastard in the College Webster's and it says, hence one conceived in a barn. And it's quite interesting that uh, with if someone does not have a surname in English law, they're called a bastard. And if they don't have a, a, a literally a legal surname, they will basically um, take one on, adopt one. It says that a bastard can adopt one or take one on um, for reasons of reputation. So common reputation was the purpose of a surname and commoners were considered to be prostitutes. So Jesus was born without a legal registered surname because the purpose of the Roman taxation system with Augustus was to literally take all the people and literally maneuver them into a system of civil pagandom and literally tax that last name um, that would be assigned on to them for civil status. So they all basically entered into a civil status arrangement of fiction, um, which literally birthed them in essence uh, into the Roman jurisdiction, which was called jus soli, citizenship by birth. And when you really look at why legal books, um, even Canadian, the fifth edition of the Canadian Law Dictionary um, literally states that a birth name is the legal surname in the jurisdiction where the person was born. Um, we know that they're birthing a persona, a mask, a false birth, an artificial birth, a cesarean birth in essence, not something that came from a natural or basically from the, the where true conception of life came. So uh, we we go through and we we look at these things and I wonder how much we actually digest of this, but it, you know it does make sense that uh, we were really never really born because if we were born in a legal birth, then it would indicate that we were symbolically held and born in sin, um, in a legalism which is opposite to free grace. You can check that out with Samuel Johnson's dictionary, 1755 on legal, because they're doing legal births and legal is the old dispensation. So it's something contrary to free grace where man will perfect himself and uh, basically bring about his own salvation through earning this. And you cannot earn salvation according to scripture. So it's contrary to free grace, but we run this legalism because we operate a whole world um, that is basically, uh, you know, born into sin until they accept free grace with Jesus Christ. So uh, in essence, you're not really born uh, until you come to full knowledge of God. Now, what's uh, also interesting, there is the... Understanding when Jesus was beside the uh, evildoer and there was one who had actually come to his senses, realized that he needed to repent for who he was. And he asked Jesus to bring him back into the membership. In fact, he said, uh, will you remember me when you enter your kingdom? And he was once, as all of us would have been, had Adam not sinned, we were in the kingdom of God. Um, but at that moment, his heart had changed. He had come to repentance and Jesus was there for him and told him that he would be with him in paradise. When you look up the Aramaic version of the word paradise, uh, paradise has a unique meaning in Aramaic, which means full knowledge of God. So Adam and Eve had the wonderful opportunity to have been in the paradise in perfection 
with full knowledge of God, without corruption, without sin. So therefore, uh, what we're what we're dealing with here right now is just, you know, to an extent for the average Bible reader and the average pulpit preacher, they do not truly um, read the Bible with eyes to see, and they're not ready to hear because, unfortunately, they're stooped in this duplistic realm of spiritual versus secular. Um, it, what is truth versus what is fiction, good versus evil. So it's a it's an extremely uh, problematic uh, situation for I think a lot of people learning, uh, maybe uh, coming on to the Zoom sessions that we provide. So if you haven't been on that, this video will be uploaded onto uh, YouTube as it will be uh, the previous video. But it's an unfortunate, uh, uh, an unfortunate miss, uh, you know, uh, misreading, shall I say, of scripture, and then also an inducement by, uh, we'll call them white collar criminals, uh, who actually say they shepherd the flock of God, but they're um, actually promoting something completely contrary to it. And so the flock, uh, in essence, when they hear this truth, they get very, very nervous and uncomfortable because now they're worried about speaking the truth to other people who have been deceived within the flock. And eventually they end up being excommunicated out of these religious groups. So anyways, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely a one day at a time on this, but it's interesting that you will realize Jesus would have been in a legal sense a bastard to the Roman system because he was born in a barn. He was born in a stable. Um, and uh, therefore, even when you look at the word barn and it has to do where, where you store straw, um, I don't know if it really has a connection totally uh, to the connection of a straw man, um, but Jesus certainly canceled out the sin regarding what would have been uh, a legal dummy, which was considered a straw man, one who holds legal title for another. It's really someone in the journey before they actually understand free grace and uh, realize uh, that uh, they cannot be surety for someone who is in a uh, basically a category of those of an uncovenanted nation, those who know not the true God, which is what those who bear Gentile surnames are defined of, defined as in uh, Samuel Johnson's dictionary uh, under Christian name and then going to the word Gentile or Gentilidious name or surname. So uh, this is, uh, I think, going to be very impacting, overwhelming for, for most but uh, those that are known to be the people of God will eventually wake up to the simplicity that a Christian name means you've accepted Jesus Christ and you have basically been redeemed from being deemed to be those of the uncovenanted nations, those who know not the true, true God, those who basically bear a uh, those that would uh, formerly, if they have been a Gentile, would be bearing a debtor name, according to uh, even Black's Law Dictionary, under nomen, or things that were defining surnames, agnomens, cognomens. But these names basically identified those of the population who had not come to uh, an awareness to enter into the covenant with uh, the true God and through his son, Jesus Christ. So uh, we have all these little clues um, that are sitting with us in scripture, but how many can, you know, literally take the time uh, to absorb it and to look at it in a manner that they can uh, digest it and share it with others. But uh, certainly everything is there. So uh, if we even look at the, the early, uh, the Israelites, when they were in bondage uh, to the pagan Pharaoh, um, one of the things that Pharaoh did was uh, he would not allow them to build any further. He actually punished them when Moses was coming in and out saying, let my people go. And he even removed straw from being mixed into the building material um, of the bricks. So they were not able to build uh, or make bricks without the straw to bind it. So could that be some kind of symbolism um, of the straw man uh, of what we're really seeing is going on here? Uh, could that be something about it? You really don't have um, the straw OK, maybe this is the last straw um, of coming to an awareness of God. But uh, the, the connections with these things happen for a reason. 
but certainly the whole concept of a straw man, a somo, uh, a straw man, a man of no means, a dummy, according to Black's Law Fourth, um, was based on someone who basically was just not basically aware of the truth. And he was basically holding a title um, unnecessarily um, for someone he was not. Therefore, violating Proverbs 11, verse 15, he was surety for another will surely smart for it. Um, those who were uh, another meant a stranger in Hebrew. So they were a stranger to the covenant of God. Uh, right now, all those who have actually been born after the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ have really no excuse other than they're ignorant of the fact of who is holding the crown right now, which would be Jesus Christ. And it's certainly not any pagan authority. The Gentiles do not have any authority of God to hold a crown of truth. Um, that's That was basically won and accomplished by Jesus who overcame death and, and brought us into life, into his uh, kingdom. So uh, there are two sides going on, but we have a choice. Do we elect to choose free grace under Jesus Christ with our Christian name, or do we continue to bear in falsehood um, that title that would identify us as a legal debtor or a Gentile, uh, those of the nations that would be part of the United Nations or the beast uh, of Revelation. So anyways, we hope that this is uh, shared enough with you and uh, you're able to uh, look a little further into researching the scriptures and the words so that you actually um, do not uh, perish due to lack of knowledge. All right, Dan, that's a good summary. And everyone is invited uh, to definitely come to ChristianRemedyInLaw.org and uh, join the sessions uh, to really get detailed on the uh, the legal aspects and the spiritual aspects of what uh, what you teach, Daniel. So it's all open to everyone uh, by your grace and the grace of God. So thank you again for this recording. Hope to see you there. Okay. God bless. God bless.